from Utah's first TV station. ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. It was 1948. Salt Lake got something only found in 12 other cities across the country, television. This is the story of how Utah's first TV station, what we all know now as ABC4, hit the air. Oh, and now 75 years later, we're going to open the vault and take a nostalgic look at the electronic mirror of all of us, the TV generation. Welcome to this special ABC4 News presentation, the kickoff to our 75th anniversary of television broadcasting in Utah. We are so proud to be Utah's first television station, a pioneer in our industry, and literally the ones to push the power button on TV here in Utah. And of course, we could not tell this story without the help of our station historian, Craig Worth. Craig, so great to see you. Hey, thank you. You know, this is all about us. We are the folks who grew up on television. You know, I remember my mother saying, don't sit so close to the TV. <laughs> That's always what I remember about television. So you know what? I came to work in TV. And you know what? Perfectly put. I remember we have so many kids in our family, and we would all fight over the station, but not every station came in clearly. We had to hit the dial exactly right <laughs> to get the right station. My, how things have changed. I was always the kid who wanted to go home from elementary school and watch the newscast. Oh, oh but, but I remember <laughs> one of my... Uh, fondest memories and earliest memories of TV was when President Ronald Reagan was shot oh, wow. and they brought televisions into the classroom so that we could, as students, watch what was unfolding that day. Wow, a moment you don't forget. We all have oh, those early TV sure, memories. Yeah. We all certainly do. You know, our station actually goes back many years before 1948. We know our promotion-driven owner put on TV demonstrations. Can you believe this? In 1939. I mm -hmm. cannot believe it, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> we have those pictures of the demonstrations. They were like tent revivals with thousands of people crowding in to see them. And Craig, as you just said, all with our our owner, Sid Fox, who did it with a flair for promotion. A man named Sid Fox had to be one of Utah's most colorful promoters in the 1930s and 40s. He owned a radio station. He threw lavish parties and hung around with stars. Oh, and he smoked expensive cigars. He also hired a photographer to follow him day and night, his own paparazzi and even saying goodbye to the radio station bowling team. You gotta love his promotions for his radio station. He once buried a live person and had crowds parade past a wooden shaft to see her, of course, as she listened to his radio station. He was Utah's P.T. Barnum, but television, that was his ultimate promotion. Yes, TV, a brand new invention Oh, that would be swell. By 1939, there were traveling TV tent shows. Wow, they were packing them in, like electronic traveling medicine shows. The biggest was from RCA at the New York World's Fair. Sid joined the crowds. Oh, this could be the greatest promotion ever. Sid owners in metropolitan New York enjoy the novel experience of receiving pictures through the air. All the great catchwords of promotion were there. The research problem of yesterday is the radio marvel of today. Another milestone of progress has been passed, and science has made a reality of the age-old dream of pictures from the sky. Well, Sid simply had the whole RCA kit and caboodle hauled to Utah, yes, in 1939. Of course, he billed it as the modern miracle of science. He posted circus-type bills. You've heard about television. You've talked about television. Now it's here. It's today's magic word, the miracle of science. The 1939 newspapers proclaimed, swaddling radio gets its eyes open. Oh, Sid was at work. He got the old Paris department store to use as his stage. This was his circus. Thousands pushed their way into the store. Yes, come see the greatest achievement of the 20th century. He had three TV sets. Come on, keep on moving. More crowds waited for hours for a glimpse of Sid Fox's show. The headlines were perfect. 
television show amazes crowds of Salt Lakers. First public show attracts thousands. Could you imagine the sight of 1,000 people here on 3rd South, all waiting to get into the Paris, the Paris department store behind me, to see the modern miracle of science television? Yes, this was 1939, and he put on a week's worth of shows on those three sets. A full week of programming that people could crowd in to see. He put out the world's first TV guide. He started with a newscast. Oh, he brought in a live orchestra and a group of dancers. One was a young girl, Lloyd Drexel. She danced on the second floor while crowds watched on the first floor. It was just remarkable, and people were standing around this one little set that was would um, get static once in a while, and once in a while you'd see a picture, just in awe that, wow, that's from clear upstairs in this building. And Utah had one of the first examples of TV ever. The set featured a small screen and a mirror that reflected the picture. We thought if we could run fast enough, we'd see ourselves downstairs on the t monitor. Don't miss the thrill of television. Calling all redheads and twins, be on TV. Oh my goodness, he crammed in more programming, every possible program. The papers were filled with daily reports of shows. People wanted TV. Well, we had programs and a program director and a camera and three sets. All Sid Fox was missing was a TV station in 1939. Well, they were kind of hard to come by, as not even New York City had a commercial TV station then. However, Sid Fox had indeed found his ultimate promotion. There was no doubt. He would have a TV station, our station today, as soon as he could. It was all telefun. It was all Sid Fox. Unfortunately, the government said, wait till after the war, Sid. There's a freeze on new stations. So it gave him a couple of years to dream up new shows and to launch Utah's first TV station, which we now proudly call ABC4. Okay, this is incredible. And what is so interesting too is Salt Lake was one of only six stations across the country that had a demonstration. In 1939, that's true. And they had big sign, the miracle of science television. Well, it still is the miracle of science. Yeah, that's what's so amazing. It drew so much attention because it was so novel at the mm -hmm. time. Just everyone trying to get that first peek. It has to seem to me, it's sort of like a moon landing. Yeah. It was impossible to believe. Pictures mm. in the air. And here we are today. What a <laughs> distance we have come. Still uh, pictures in the air. Yes. <laughs> now the demonstrations were not enough. Our station has to build equipment to go on the air, all in a secret laboratory. That story next. You're watching a special presentation from ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. We're having some nostalgic fun looking over our television history as Utah's first TV station and really one of the first television stations in the whole country. And I am fascinated that our engineers really had to build most of the equipment from scratch after buying a couple TV cameras and a couple TV sets used at the New York World's Fair of 1939. Yeah, back then there was no Radio Shack in the neighborhood. There was no TV repair shop either. So engineers were doing this during the war, which meant there were even limited supplies. Craig is about to show us it was all done there on site in downtown Salt Lake City in a building there. And people were getting excited to even catch a a glimpse of a station test pattern. Let's take a look. Well, back during the Second World War, there was another building here along Second East and First South. It was the KDYL Radio Playhouse. And upstairs, there was sort of a secret project going on. A team of top engineers were building homemade equipment for television. At the time, our company was the KDYL radio station. We had no TV station, but we would be ready once the government lifted wartime TV restrictions. The small inconvenience of not having a station, government license, or transmitter did not stop our owner, Sid Fox, from doing TV throughout the 1940s. 
Fresh off his triumphant 1939 demonstrations, he kept building interest. He took everything to the state fair and put up more circus-like posters. He now built TV boldly as the scientific marvel of the age, for he invented reality TV, a talent contest, sound familiar, and the teletot contest. Yes, who was the cutest kid in town? Now, we might not have had a station in the early 1940s, but we had a studio and a real cool neon sign at the state fair for the daily demos. Singers sang, cattle mood, and amazed crowds just kept watching. Meanwhile, back at the lab, engineers kept making homemade parts to match up with the World's Fair cameras. A camera set up to film TV ads, oh, some way to make a transmitter work, a studio to shoot station breaks, a way to put film movies on TV, monitors for the control room, and pieces of the control room for those homemade monitors. And the war ended. Returning soldiers got the first peek at the amazing stuff. And then they took all that fancy equipment and put it in an old building right here and put a fancy sign on the side. That building told Utah that television was here from a studio where the City Creek Center is now located. And they had that task to find perhaps the tallest building in town to put a tower on top so you could broadcast to the whole city or at least part of it. Yes, this was the tallest place. And that was Channel 4's transmitter location. The iconic city landmark was a TV tower. Now they were ready to throw the switch and to see if all the handmade equipment worked. This was also new, that the government could only issue an experimental license. Channel 4 would be called W6XIS. Well, they drew up a card and played an old record and filmed it all as a test. It worked. Fortunately, they saved that historic film. They announced they would be testing more in early 1948. More music and more test patterns. It was getting near time for that first night of programming. And Craig, the thing is, they were not even aware that they were making history. It was a job. They did know about radio at the time, but that's a big leap going from sound to sound and picture, right? That's correct, yeah. You don't just put pictures over a radio set and it becomes TV. <laughs> if only it were that simple. Yeah. <laughs> just fascinating how that all happened back then, though. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at how our actual TV sets have evolved over the past 75 years. a special presentation from ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. Now, the technology was not just in how our genius engineers had to build the equipment. Electronics had to come to your living room. I know pretty much all of us remember the old TVs back when they were TVs with real dials and big boxes, not like today's monitors. You know, we are surrounded here all around us by 1948 TV sets, and we know that because they were the only sets in town then, and we know that they were all tuned to Channel 4 because we were the only the station. Only one, yeah. And so we had 100% of the ratings. How about that? How about that? Do you know one of the first TVs that I remember, and I don't know what year this was, but we was just a giant box, heavy, very mm -hmm. heavy to move. Yeah, I remember moving TVs. Uh, it was a lot harder back then, <laughs> yes. that's for sure. But. Much, much different than these ones from 1948, though, as well, when we started to get into the 70s and 80s. Oh, yeah. These were like six-inch tubes, a yeah. little strain your eyes, and they probably weren't the clearest pictures. But you know, as many of us know, the early TVs had a long way to go. But they were certainly whiz-bang technological marvels, and they did have lots of dials, a big box, and a giant glass eye that stared back at you. See me at my best. See me on a Motorola. Your eye tells why Motorola gives clearer, sharper pictures. For example, only Motorola has Glare Guard, the curved screen that eliminates up to 98% of all reflected glare. 
you'll find glare guard on the beautiful new Motorola's. Stunning consoles, handsome combinations, 18 fashion award-winning cabinet styles, like this Motorola Modern in Elsa Maxwell's smartly styled apartment. Come with me, and I'll show you what every one of you can do single-handed. Here, you can tune in this wonderful new Westinghouse television set with just one hand like this, because it has the sensational new Westinghouse single dial control. There's no more fussing with several dials. You just turn this one dial and you're tuned in perfectly. Picture and sound come in together just like that. And once tuned, this set stays locked in tune. If you're still watching television on a small screen set, you're missing a lot. Here, for example, is a close-up on a 10-inch set. See how much smaller it is than my head? Now I'd like to show you the same close-up on a 21-inch set. There. Just look at the difference. She's as big as I am now. You can have big screen close-ups with RCA Victor's great new 21-inch model, the Master 21. The few TV sets scattered around town, all that our owner, Sid Fox, hauled from the New York World's Fair, and all were built in the secret lab on 2nd East. They came together one night in 1948. We have rare pictures and film of that first night of TV right after the break. Stay with us. You're watching a special presentation from ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. It was built as magic, and you know, part of the magic was our promoter and owner, Sid Fox, that kept tempting the audience with those chances to be on TV and those demos all through the 1940s. To this day, it's still so exciting to see that magic and everything that goes into producing a live or even a recorded TV broadcast. Well, a decade of planning was over, and Sid Fox put on his TV station. And again, the only station in the country that was privately owned, all the rest were corporate owned, Utah's first TV station. The day had arrived. Almost a decade of building equipment and years of demonstrations. And now it was April 19th, 1948. The newspapers were full of announcements and advertisements. Salt Lake City would join a dozen cities across the whole country. Television was here. Pictures would fly through the air. Our station would sign on, starting almost 75 years of broadcasting to this very moment as Utah's first TV station. And at 8 o'clock that Monday in April, our engineers of the day threw the on switch, and by golly, it worked. A hand-painted card flashed onto the screens of the couple hundred sets. That night, more hand-painted cards would be dropped in front of the homemade graphics system. They announced programs and advertisements. Now, keep in mind, this was so new, especially in the West, that the paper carried questions from people who might see this modern miracle of science thing called TV here at Channel 4. Will it broadcast on radio? No. Is my present radio adapted for television? No. Is it possible to tune television programs directly from distant cities? No, it will never happen. You will only be able to see your neighbor kids play the piano. In fact, one of the first shows involved the chief engineer's daughters playing the piano. Now, years ago, I asked one of them about the experience. It was an important event. I never did quite figure out exactly what it was for, but because I never did see myself. Or you saw the other neighbor kids tap dancing. It was all magic. But we knew from that first day that TV was swell. Here's how we knew. You see, the Deseret News picked the two greatest inventions that were seen at the 1948 State Fair, television and the massage mat. Well, it doesn't get any better than that. Okay, you can find enough rope jumpers and people to draw funny faces to juggle your TV schedule around three days a week. But how are you gonna put this stuff on TV? I mean, how do you run these really cool lights? The late Mark Hampson was on the crew that very first day. 
We were all young guys. We didn't know what to do. Uh, we didn't have anybody to ask what to do because nobody knew what to do. So we experimented with everything. So schools popped up on how to do this TV stuff. Oh, you could train for TV and radio electronics. And my favorite, radio, television, refrigeration, and air conditioning. Well, it's all about the same stuff. And the other issue, folks had to have something to watch all this on. That first day, you could buy about three TV set models, like the Admiral, for $299.95. And this is actually one of those TVs from April 1948. I guess since the knobs really didn't do anything, they just tore them out. But most had to see the Admiral set in a store window. You would gather around and watch with people watching you. ZCMI had one in its window. George's Furniture had another. Come on down and see the first night of TV. And a tavern in Murray would get one in time for the fights. Oh wow, you could buy one for your own home and be so cool. You know, there were so very few TVs back then that the newspaper would do stories on those who had televisions, such as this one, a prize 1948, and people posed with their sets. And indeed, this is Mrs. Hiskey in front of an identical Philco TV. Now that's news. And we salute the viewers. And we salute those who put the station on the air that night. They were the pioneers. What a wonderful way to kick off our year-long celebration of our 75th anniversary. Craig, of course, thank you for keeping us posted on this all and keeping the records that you have kept organized and able to present back to us. We appreciate it most. And we are just getting started. You can see more on our 75th anniversary celebration right here on ABC4 every Sunday and Monday on ABC4 News at 10 with Craig's legendary Worth Watching reports. All right, oh to be there back in the day, right? We'll also have another 75th special for you in just a couple of months. We are celebrating all year long and hope you'll join us. Take care, everyone. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Well, exactly 75 years ago this evening, our TV station signed on the air as Utah's first TV station. And Salt Lake City would be only the 13th city in America to get TV. Hello and welcome to this special ABC4 75th anniversary celebration. We're cozying up in front of our TV here in our 1948 flashback living room. And yes, as Craig said, our station was the only TV station between Chicago and Los Angeles on the air back in April of 1948. TV was really the electronic and scientific wonder and Salt Lake City got to see it before most of the country, a cause for celebration then. And certainly after three quarters of a century, it is a cause for celebration tonight. Indeed, a celebration among all of us, the thousands who've worked at ABC4 and the millions who have grown up as the TV generation. We're gonna have some fun and look back at our pioneering history. Well, let's relive that exciting night, April 19th, 1948, when pictures magically flew through the air to Utah's television sets, like that one. <laughs> Salt Lake City saw a strange new word light up an old building, television. All systems were go from this Buck Rogers looking control room on that Monday night, April 19th, 1948. A crew member held up this very card. An engineer threw a switch on the transmitter to go on the air and the signal was sent to the tower on top of the old Walker Bank building it had been a decade in the making. Utah's first TV station was on the air, and we still are on the air 75 years later. Much of all of this was handmade that night. There were no electronic graphics, for example. The late Mark Hampson made all the signs. I mean, he made all the signs for the shows. Barbershop harmonies, sports window, World Series report, and the Spring Whispers show. He did all the station ID signs. They were among his favorites. Yes, and all the publicity signs. 
I loaded all the cameras. I loaded all the trucks, the parabolas. I loaded all the office doors. I did all the on-the-air cards. I did all the scenery. Uh, as an artist, we was hired as an artist to do artwork for printing. We did store displays. And he painted all the sets. This paper I could buy 12 feet high and 30 feet long. So we painted a lot of scenery on paper. It was easy to roll up. Sometimes we'd have back-to-back -back shows while the camera was on somebody else. We'd roll that paper up and have another set back of that. The paper behind the singer, the barn scene, the bar scene, and his favorite one was this, the mountain scene. The mountain scene we used for, for everything. The employees all marked those first days in front of that one. They were our pioneers. One was announcer Alan Frank. He was hired shortly after the station started broadcasting. He said, now I'm going to bring you aboard. You'll be the first television announcer that we hired. And I'm going to hire you for $150 a month. But you be quiet about that because everyone else is being paid $100 a month. They had to improvise as they went along. There were no powerful floodlights for the basically homemade cameras, so they made banks of spotlights that could follow the action. Of course, the lights broiled everyone in front of them. We would go through five, six shirts a day, perspiring. That's how warm it was. All the shows were created locally and all needed new sets. We're only on the air on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so Friday night, the wrestles ended. We had Saturday and Sunday to get set back up for Monday. Uh, I've thought a lot of times the time that we spent was a 12 and 14 hour a day getting ready to do two hours on Monday. You would think that they would have run out of program ideas. The crews were put to work. Mark Hampson played the musical saw. The chief engineer's kids played the piano. And when a film broke, Alan Frank played that piano, and Mark Hampson would make up a sign stating that the film indeed had broken. They finally moved my first sign shop. Little room was right up by the announcer's booth because sometimes the film would break. Hurry up and make a poster. Please stand by having technical difficulties. A lucky few had the television sets in Salt Lake City. Other lucky viewers drew seats in store display windows. They were not alone that first night. Hundreds crowded the sidewalks to watch them watching TV. ZCMI had one in its window. George's Furniture had another. Come on down and see the first night of TV. Later, there would be rooms full of viewers. Folks were amazed. It was all magic. They watched hobby shows, and they watched commercials, and they kept their eyes open well into the night. Those first days were successful. Salt Lake City took to TV. In fact, Mark had to make a new sign. We now doubled our programming to six nights a week. And goodness, Craig, they just, it seems, did not understand just how big of a deal this really would be and how it would change the entertainment and news industry. But they did know they were having fun. And coming up, now you got to see it to believe it. It was the tele-wedding. And when it came to TV and our early audience, everyone said, I do at the tele-wedding. You're watching ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. Welcome back. Those early TV pioneers had to be creative with no network programming and no videotape. Live events were a big thing, Craig. One of our favorites was the idea to have what our early programmers were calling a telewedding. And who would not want to watch people get married on TV? <laughs> now, it was a great idea in 1948. A couple of years ago, we showed some pictures of that telewedding. And guess what? The happy couple called the station right after that news report, and they said, hey, we were the bride and groom of the telewedding. Well, tonight they remember it all. How about a telewedding? Now, how cool is that? Five years ago, we found a couple pictures of it, and we showed it. 
the winners had written an essay on why they wanted a home. That was first prize, but there was also the telewedding on TV from the fairgrounds. We're having a sandwich and we found on the, on the counter a little tab that, where they were announcing this contest. Yes, Veer McHenry was in love with Barbara Jean Oliver. But they were going to wait a couple of years to get married. It was just a lark that we <laughs> filled out that application, that little essay that they had, had us write. Well, they won. They would get married at the State Fairgrounds Home Show. Yes, all on television. They waited, as did the town wait, as did the lucky ones with TV sets. It was a big deal. And then it happened. Yes, in front of a television camera. They would be married. It was live and special. To this day, she has her wedding dress from the telewedding. They had us march in, and uh, her father brought her down the aisle and turned her over to me. There were only a few TVs in Utah then. Store owners put televisions in their store windows and they set out chairs so customers could see this odd thing called television. That's how their friends saw the telewedding. There was a, a television set in the, in the window of Murray Music, and they said they had a big crowd out there that watched it from there. Barbara Jean's dad also had a rare television in his tavern, so he was already a fan. This was great. Dad kind of liked it, didn't they were, you? They were pretty excited. Yeah, I think they were. Probably more than we were. <laughs> I think so. Now, Channel 4 did its part, the live telewedding, but some other sponsors, well, some things kind of got lost. There was a promise for a house, at least a really good price for a house, and that didn't quite happen. One of the people there that was in charge said something about that we they would move that home onto a site and they would give us the down payment for the house. And that's as much as we ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and a promise of a night at the Hotel Utah Bridal Suite. We went over to the hotel, and uh, the bridal suite was booked, as was every other room in the Hotel Utah. So they housed us that night in the band room with all the instruments. <laughs> <laughs> I know we wish that we could give you that honeymoon suite now. Oh, wait, the Hotel Utah is gone. I can't promise you the Hotel Utah, but at least we can promise it's going to be on. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I always that. loved you. I knew you'd do something good. You know, they're so nice. Now, I really feel bad about the mix-up at the Hotel Utah, and I wasn't even born then. But they did get the honeymoon. A very nice, all-expense uh, honeymoon in Elko, Nevada. You know, Veer says what they didn't get doesn't matter. He got Barbara Jean. That was the grand prize. <laughs> all from the 1948 telewedding and a really sweet couple. A couple so sweet, they could give you a cavity. I would say I do to watching that a million more times. Yeah, maybe we should bring the telewedding back. Yeah. <laughs> there and, you go. And maybe we can even get them to Las Vegas this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, how sad. Yeah. All right. What a sweet couple, though. It's their 75th anniversary as well. So happy Diamond Jubilee anniversary. Yes, and we have more to celebrate coming up. One of the first live remote trucks in the country, meaning some of the first live broadcasts of football, baseball, and even the circus. And don't forget, wrestling and bowling. <laughs> coverage outside of the studio was a big undertaking in 1948, and it still can be quite the adventure today at times even. Well, our station got one of the first live remote trucks in the country. Now, we only had a couple of cameras and a few microphones back then, so the engineers had to empty out the station and put everything in the truck, sometimes on a daily basis. Ooh. Yes, but the results are amazing. And fortunately, we have old films that were recorded right off the screens for some of these shows. 
From its first day, our engineers saw the need to show television from where the events happened. We had one of the very first mobile units in America, and so we had some of the very first live remote broadcasts in America, and thus some of the very first live broadcasts of baseball, wrestling, boxing, circuses, parades, state fairs, ribbon cuttings, book signings, bowling, golf, ranch and roundups, water softeners, and mattresses. It was nearly a daily scene. Crews would empty the building and load up the truck, and then they would get to a location and put it all together. This was an event at the Capitol building. You see out there perched on the ledge, there is a camera person who is much braver than I am. Now, sometimes this was all to do a commercial in a remote location or the opening of a store. Now, the promotional value wasn't lost on the station. Thousands watched the remote van instead of the event. A TV truck was a sight only found in a handful of cities in the entire country. I guess it was kind of like a space capsule or maybe the first airplane. In fact, as we mentioned, we did the 1948 Utah football season, and the paper was so interested in that, it devoted more of the article to the broadcast than to the game. Quarterback Parkinson's pass was a million and a half tiny picture elements. How you could see eight or nine players at a time, and how a hair-like beam sweeps across your set at home. And it gave the station a swell picture of the remote truck crew instead of anything in the game. The crews and the announcers were pioneers. Of course, they also reflected the times. Now, bowling was big in those days, and so they did bowling. A film camera shot these pictures of a live remote from the classic lanes 75 years ago. Our announcer for bowling was the legendary Paul James. He was also sent to announce the boxing matches. Again, it was a first. The official decision. I'd never done a fight before. I didn't know how to do a fight, but I sat there at ringside and I remembered how the, the guys used to do it on radio, so I did the fight. Our station got quite a reputation for doing the remote broadcasts. After we finally got the network to reach us by microwave, we started doing nationwide remotes with a number of cameras hooked up to a truck. This was the women's choir from Temple Square. We did the full Salt Lake Oratorial Society Choir from the Wasatch Mountains on a New Year's Day, complete with six cameras. And famed announcer Dave Garraway took the microphone to a live fall dance for train a dream of a past summer at Lagoon closed for the season. Had a dance to that dream and their inside an experience deep in their memory. Like the story of a child that brought this dream to life. In the valley between the Wasatch Mountains, midway between Salt Lake City and Ogden, Utah. The Virginia Tanner dancers began with an experience and created a dance story entitled a dream about summer. Summer was yesterday, and today was autumn. Our genius director, Danny Ranger, was orchestrating the many cameras. As the music was playing, we had a musician standing behind me, showing me exactly where I was in the music at all times. So th that was unusual, too, so most of the time a director's working off a script. Well, now you can say without romantic equivocation that you saw a dream dancing, and on live TV. My favorite was done at Elta again, all live, with our great announcer, Ellen Mall, doing the commentary. Again, a national broadcast. This is literally a carnival atmosphere, with the snow falling in the beautiful Wasatch National Forest. Enthusiastic about skiing, as Damon Runyon's characters were about a daily double at Jamaica Racetrack. But here, there's nothing to lose, and everyone can afford it. 
The price of the sport is the slight risk of the unmentionable busted tibia of your careless. But most every winter sportsman can afford the price of food and bunk bed at Alta. But now, let's leave the warmth of the lodge and see what's doing in the snow. But is it safe? The idea was to then shoot off a controlled avalanche, just as the Forest Service does for safety on the mountains. Ellen continued to read Danny Ranger's script, building the drama. Men of the Forest Service race against time and the terror of an avalanche on top of a mountain. By now, the fog was so bad you couldn't see much at all, and everything was dripping wet. Three seconds. Two seconds. Ball hit the big moment. Cue the avalanche. One second. It never went off. And Danny kept yelling in, in the earphones, Cue the avalanche. Ah, oh, but it was all live. Well, the early programmers at our station had quite a reputation doing shows seen live throughout the country. Yeah, our engineers were called upon to do some pretty amazing coverage. I can only imagine what they thought when the avalanche failed on cue or we had that rare foggy day at Alta. But at the end of the day, that's live TV for you. Yeah. <laughs> and the national shows, meaning the network, arrives in Salt Lake City. That's right, what an exciting time it was and they wanted everyone to tune in. So in a moment, we show you promotions that we can only describe as our good friend Craig Wood as <laughs> swell <laughs> from the 1950s and 1960s. Stay with us. Utah's first television station is celebrating 75 years of broadcasts. Join us Wednesday, April 19th, starting at 7 p.m. on Utah's CW30 for a look at the history, the people, and the stories. This ABC4 75th Celebration Special, sponsored by Hoops Vision. ABC4, good for Utah. Vintage furniture for this ABC4 special provided by the Post Trading Company, Salt Lake City. So we finally got the national network shows to go along with our local shows. And as you might imagine, the station wanted everyone to know about it. Well, Craig found some of those early promotion spots, of course. So you can't really describe them. You just have to see them. That's something new is ABC. With giant steps, we've made our bid for mastery. A brand new TV network is born. That's why we're of ABC, ABC, ABC. Yes, we now had great shows. My name is Alan Maxwell. I am transmitting from a station on the third planet. Such is the monster guy. Oh no, he has broken through the cardboard box thing. from another dimension, another galaxy. What's going on? He's very upset, Dr. Graves. He wants to see Dr. Thompson. Well, uh, why don't you just sit over you touch me again and I'll kill you. And my favorite, a show about a clarinet player gone mad. Yes, TV has come a long way, but as long as we've had shows, by golly, we have had promotions. Exciting things are happening on Channel 4. You're gonna see spectacular and sports events galore. You're gonna see the very best shows. And most of them will be in color. Exciting things are happening at KTVT. Channel 4 is jumping with activity. You're gonna see a season like you've never seen before. Exciting things are happening on Channel 4. Exciting things are happening on Channel 4. 
makes me want to watch. And you know what? Exciting things continue to happen on ABC4. Hold on, I'm going to give it a try. Exciting things continue to happen on ABC4. Right, Craig? Come on, back me up. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. If That's this good. TV thing doesn't work out for you. Oh, stop. <laughs> and all this year, we will continue to celebrate our 75th year of broadcasting in Utah alongside you, the TV generation. And as the guys in the promotion were singing, and most of our shows will be in color. Woo! All right, Craig. So in honor of our anniversary today, we are hosting a celebration here at the studio. We're going to send it out live now to our vice president and general manager, Mark Danielson, to wrap things up in style. Save, Save us some, some cake. cake. I will definitely save you some cake. Good evening, Utah. I'm Mark Danielson, and I am honored to be the general manager for ABC4. We are here tonight to celebrate 75 years of bringing television to the state of Utah and the surrounding communities of Idaho, Nevada, and Wyoming. I sure wish the broadcast pioneers of 1948 could see us now. And I wonder, what would they think? Would they have imagined just how far we've come since the black and white days of the TV broadcast they created? Well, and of course, it wouldn't be a celebration without all of you. Those gathered right here in our studio tonight and our viewers watching from home, or maybe you're watching on a mobile device. I want to thank you for being a part of our broadcast family and audience. Whether you've been watching us for 75 years or maybe you just tuned in tonight, whatever the case, I am glad you're here with us. Also here with us tonight are former ABC team members. We've met engineers, advertisers, and there's some on-air talent you just might recognize. I've seen Kimberly Perkins, Bill Reeson, Barbara Smith, Clayton Brock, Randall Carlisle, and Steve Brown, just to name a few. It is so good to have all of you with us tonight. You know, we started regular broadcast on this very day, April 19, 1948. Our station was also the very first to broadcast in color. And today, we operate our transmitter high atop Farnsworth Peak in a state-of-the-art facility on the Ochre Mountains. Our goal since that very first day has been to keep you informed and entertained, and it's still our commitment to you today. So, let's toast to our past, the present, and our future. Let's, let's raise a glass together and celebrate 75 years and counting. We're celebrating as one Good for Utah family. I sure hope you all have a great night, everyone, and thank you for being part of our fabulous celebration.